Hello and welcome to Historiography. Historiography is the study of historical writing. Timelines are often great ways to understand the chronology of events and the flow of historical events. In this series, let's go through some timelines of critical historical characters and events that shape their persona. Let's dive right into it. Today's episode is about the life and times of Chhatrapati Sambhaji Maharaj, the eldest son of Shivaji Maharaj. He was born in 1657 at the fort of Purandar and was possibly named after his uncle who was the elder brother of Shivaji Maharaj. Since his mother was ill at the time of his birth, he was wet nursed by a woman named Dharav Gade from the town of Kapurhol. His mother passed away in 1659, the same year that Afzal Khan was defeated. In 1661 he was betrothed to the daughter of Pilaji Shirke, Jiubai. She was named Yesubai post her marriage. 1664 turned out to be an eventful year for him. The same year when Mirza Raja Jai Singh was appointed against the Marathas. His grandfather Shahji Maharaj passed away the same year. He was brought up by his grandmother and had a strong connect with her. After the conditional surrender of the Marathas to the Mughals, Diler Khan mediated for his mansab in 1665, for which he was appointed to 5000 men. Following this, he visited Agra in 1666 with his father to the court of Aurangzeb. They escaped Agra in a daring turn of events. While his father returned to Rajgarh first, he followed later escorted by Kesho Trimal. In 1667, he was deputed to Aurangabad representing his father and the surrendered Maratha forces. He was accompanied by the Maratha commander Pratap Rao Gujar and was stationed at Prince Shah Alam's camp. At this young age of 10, He was getting his first lessons of politics and diplomacy. He then left Aurangabad camp in 1670 just before the Marathas opened a front against the Mughals. There was a change in diplomacy. His return to Rajgarh was followed by an attack on Sihagarh by Maratha captain Taraji Malusare. In 1674 at the age of 17 we see him in the capacity of a crown prince at his father's coronation. The same year he discusses with British diplomats for their proposals of trade. This year is often considered as a year of finance with multiple budgets being released, trade terms being signed and forts being repaired. Tragically this is also the year of demise of his grandmother Jizabai who passed away just after her son's coronation. We see his letters as a crown prince in 1675. The year he had his threat ceremony. Dr Fryer a traveler from those times writes that he also accompanied Maratha army on the quest of the fort Fonda in Goa In 1676 Sambhaji Maharaj coordinated the planning for the raid on the fort of Panhala with Anna Ji Datto This raid was conducted by the brave Konda Ji Farzan This is the year when the power was decentralized and roles and responsibilities were assigned to prominent leaders in the Maratha court men In 1677 When his father left for the expedition to the southern part of India, he was deputed at Sringarpur and seems to have taken a liking to the devotion, mystics, worships and studies of goddess Bhavani and different aspects of Hinduism. Umaji Pandit accompanied him during his stay at Sringarpur. His daughter Bhavani Bai was born in 1678 at Sringarpur. While his father was in Karnataka, he visited the fort of Parali near Satara. and abruptly allied with the Mughal forces under the command of Diler Khan Pathan it is often debated whether it was a secret plan of his father but more evidences need to come to light before a judgment can be passed in this regard he stayed with Diler Khan in 1679 and accompanied him on his attack to capture the fort of Bhopalgad Diler Khan's cruelty or his father's instructions changed his mind soon after and he returned to the Maratha faction and met his father on the fort of Panala In 1680 while he was at Panala he got the news of untimely demise of his father at the fort of Raigad he also came to know of a plan set against him by the ministers to crown Raja Ram his younger step brother he returned to Raigad and arrested the ministers while taking charge as the Maratha king his initial focus was on the island of Mumbai and the growing power of the british he offered to purchase the island of Mumbai for 50000 rupees The same year a prominent Mughal commander Bahadur Khan Kokaltash was appointed against the Marathas to combat the incoming army ongoing battles and stationed security he had to divide his army into three forces 
He also forgave and released all his arrested ministers later this same year. 1680 was also the year when he attacked Burhanpur. He plundered and ravaged the city of Burhanpur, one of the prominent cities under Mughal rule. 1681 was the year of his official coronation. He took charge of his office and appointed Harji Mahadik to administer Karnataka. The Mughal market of Dharangao was sacked this year. This was followed by the arrival of Prince Akbar, who revolted against his father, lost the battle of Ajmer and reached Maratha country accompanied by his companion Durga Das Rathore. He was stationed at Pali. This very year another plan to dethrone him was foiled and 22 people were sentenced to death, crushed under an elephant which included few of his ministers. His stepmother Soira Bai also passed away at Fort Raigad shortly later. This year also marks an attempt by him to ally with the Rajputs to install Akbar to the throne of Delhi which would in turn favor the Rajputs and the Marathas. A famous letter written to Ram Singh explains this plot. In 1681 he attempted to invade Mysore. Then an important city in the south which was ruled by Mudiyar Chikkadev Rai. His large army though was repelled. In 1682 he focused on gaining the parts in the Konkan which were controlled by the Siddhis of Janjira. He battled Siddhi at the town of Rajpuri which he conquered but lost the fort of Anjadev which was under Maratha control. Maratha army later attacked the island of Janjira for 30 days doing heavy damage but failed to breach its defenses. He then attempted a ruse sending a party of his people under Kondaji Farzan to the Siddhis claiming to be defectors. and planned to detonate the gunpowder store on the island however the plot was uncovered and the infiltrators were executed the marathas then attempted to build a stone causeway from the shore to the island but were interrupted halfway through when the mughal army moved towards raigad sambhaji had to return to counter them and his remaining troops were unable to overcome the janjira garrison and the siddhi fleet that was protecting it This was also the year when the Mughal emperor Aurangzeb with all his might had marched south to Deccan to bring it under Mughal command. His commanders and sons had started few months before him and reached the Maratha country while Aurangzeb reached Burhanpur. Mughal commander Shahabuddin Khan Firoz Jang besieged the fort of Ramses while Ranamast Khan and Bahadur Khan attacked Konkan. On the family side his son Shahu was born this very year at Ganguly near Raigad. The prominent saint Ramdas Swami died at the fort of Sajjangad in 1682. While Aurangzeb concentrated against the Qutub Shahi in his Deccan conquest in the year of 1683, the Maratha armies were fighting against the Portuguese. The king himself besieged the fort of Revadanda, while his commanders Yesaji Kank, accompanied by son Krishna ji, led the battle at Fort Fonda. The cost of the victory at Fonda was the martyrdom of Krishna ji Kank. With the victory of Fonda the king then concentrated against the Portuguese and opened a war front at Goa Kavi Kalash a trusted aide was appointed as Kulekhtiar in 1684 Kalash then represented the Marathas at the Treaty of Bhimgarh with the Portuguese This year also saw the betrayal of loyalists like Manaji More and Rahuji Somnath who were arrested His step uncle Ekoji Raje passed away this year at Tanjavur 1685 was a year of growing conflicts Shahabuddin Khan attacked Ganguly near Raigad while Aurangzeb was busy in his expedition against Adil Shahi at Bijapur Sambhaji Maharaj sent Kavi Kalash and his army chief Hambir Rao Mohite to help the Adil Shahi forces This very year marked the end of Qutub Shahi and the loyal ministers Akanna and Madanna were murdered by the Mughals 1686 began with the loss of an important territory to the Mughals the province and fort of Miraz While Hambir Rao back from Vijapur was following the movements of Mughal commander Ranamast Khan Kesotrimal was appointed to Karnataka Aurangzeb meanwhile completed his victory at Bijapur the kingdoms of Adil Shahi and Qutub Shahi which were formed after the split of Bahmani kingdom were thus captured by the Mughals there was an effort to convince prominent Maratha loyalists like Sarja Rao Jaide in 1687 who had aided with the Mughals during these testing times Prince Akbar who had revolted against his father and could not make much of it finally decided to flee india and left for iran to his maternal uncle hambir rao fought a brave battle at wai against ranamast khan and died when a cannon shot hit him with the mughal might now concentrated against the marathas marathas lost important strongholds of salher muller and the fort of ramses which was standing a fight for 5 years now 
Maratha forces were now fighting two enemies, Mughals and Bitrials. In 1688, Kavikalash feuded with the Shirke clans of Vishalgad and was defeated in a skirmish against them. Sambhaji Maharaj wrote to Vishalgad to help Kavikalash defeat the Shirkes, who were his in-laws. This very year, a major plague broke out in the city of Vijapur. Aurangzeb by now was stationed at the town of Tulapur near Pune. In 1689, on his way back from Vishalgad, Sambhaji Maharaj halted at Sangameshwar with his aide Kavikalash when Mughal commander Mukarrab Khan raided the town of Sangameshwar. They were captured by the Mughals in this raid. Marathas announced Rajaram as their new king and continued the fight, while Sambhaji Maharaj and Kavikalash were taken to Bahadurgad. They were insulted, maimed, and later killed at Tulapur on the orders of Aurangzeb. This marked the end of an era of whirlwind and fight for the survival of the Maratha country. That sums up this episode of Life and Times. Do let us know your feedback through the comment section and show us some love by subscribing our channel and pressing the bell icon to set up notifications. We interact on these social handles and thanks to our patrons and YouTube members. It's you that make ventures like these possible. Many thanks again for watching this video. You were watching Historiography. Historiography.